LA, the city of angels, Hollywood, La La Land. The land where dreams and fame are pursued and sometimes found. The home of the entertainment industry and an economy larger than many countries. What more can we say? We are Angelinos and we know our city. At least most of us think we do. There's an entire side of LA that has not only been lost, but was purposely pushed aside. These are a few of the stories that have been forgotten by everybody but those who lived it. My name is Janae Collins, Chanupa Yuha Wea Macha. I'm from Poplar, Montana. I'm enrolled in the Fort Peck Assiniboine and Sioux tribes, but I'm also half Crow. And I came to Tongva land, AKA Los Angeles in 2013 to act. Well, key all my relatives. My name is Keith Viel. I am Blackfoot Indian from Browning, Montana. My Indian name is Strikes Near. My family come down to Los Angeles, California, a part of the Relocation Act in 1963. I am Pamela Villasenor. I am a citizen of Fernandinho Tatavian Band of Mission Indians. I am a mother, a daughter, a knowledge keeper, and I'm happy to share more about my community, the Fernandinho Tatavian, with all of you. I spent years of training in classes and workshops and auditioning in a smaller market, but still a lucrative market for film before I ever thought of moving to LA to advance my career. And I kind of couldn't help but feel very isolated in a lot of situations because there are natives here, but it's very uh, spread out in the sense of community. When I got here, I had expected, you know, to get into casting rooms, to be able to audition, to like walk into these cattle calls and be seen, but it's just so difficult. One of the biggest hurdles many Native actors face when coming to LA is not competing with other Natives for roles, but dealing with people who steal our identity to take Native roles. We call these people pretendians. There was one particular time in 2018, 2019 that I felt so invisible and I remember being in a parking lot and wing stop on Santa Monica and Western in the car with my uh, partner Brian and I had just gotten news that this role that I had um, gotten a call back for that I was really really excited about it was a, a huge it would have been a huge role for me went to, to a pretendian. Today we're in Encino, California, better known to me as my village of Siuskunga, the place of the oaks. There were Indian reservations right here in Los Angeles before the U.S. was even here. And my family had one of them. Our leader, Maria Rita Alipas, fought for this land in a time when women didn't have rights and indigenous peoples didn't have rights either. Eventually my people lost our village lands. You see, after the Mexican-American War, village lands were supposed to become Indian reservations for tribes. But that never happened in 1850s California. Instead, there was heavy anti-Indian sentiment, including the legalization of Indian slavery, including the genocide of California Indians. And all of this coupled with the facts that tribes and tribal people didn't have rights here in the United States created the perfect storm that led to all of the village land grants here in Los Angeles never becoming Indian reservations for my community and the other tribal communities in Los Angeles County. We come down here during that time when there was riots and all them things like that. So we were put in a, a pretty much of a battle zone of race fighting each other. Uh, coming from a peaceful reservation where we're all black feet. Uh, we got along, but here down here, they didn't get along down here. 
It was a bad time to come down during that in the 60s. I had three ponytails. That was a big thing. And they, they would pull on them. Uh, just a lot of abuse, uh, bullying that I look back, but mostly the prejudice. We weren't called Indians, we were called uh, 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 Mexicans or wetbacks or things like that. So they didn't identify as that. It was at the lowest part, I feel like, of my career where I felt so invisible and so passed over that I dealt with another huge blow, which was losing my father figure in my life, my uncle. We honored him and I came back home and found out that I had an audition. I remember like walking to the audition and just feeling so hopeless and so sad. I didn't have any makeup on. I literally just felt like I was just doing this audition just because I had to keep going. I had to keep doing something. There was something in the back of my head that told me to keep, keep going. One more time, one more audition. And I did, I, I taped it, and I remember feeling the profound sense of loss in the audition, which I connected with my character in that sense, thinking of my uncle. And that was the first audition for the project that would change the rest of my life. But we didn't come down here with our cousins, our relatives, or my dog, or horses, or our animals. We just come with the clothes that we had. So it was like a survival thing. How do you survive? You can't survive alone. Once we start connecting through the powwows, then we felt like um, there are relatives. The kids are my cousins. Now my cousins are here. Uh, this is my auntie. I was able to say auntie and uncle and grandpa and uh, my friends. They become my uh, cousins, uh, relatives. And I think that's how we survived. And that's why we stayed here so long. If we didn't have that tribal unity, I don't think we would have made it. From the 1850s through 1900, the Fernandinho Tatavium, our ancestors fought in court for our rights. We fought for the village right here at Siut Ganga, today in Encino, and the fight for San Fernando through the 1890s. Ultimately, these were big fights. When we didn't have rights as tribes, we didn't have rights as native people, and yet we were still in these fights, even when we didn't speak the language. I had a lot of good time of dancing around here with my friends, with other Native Americans. And I think that's part of the big survival thing that we have, is that we were able to communicate with our own people. The tribe, the drum, the flute, all the food that we had, plentiful. It's like we were back home. Um, but we weren't, but that's how we survived. That was one of the survival, is that powwow and a community getting together. It was the 1960s when our great leader, Rudy Ortega Sr., inquired and fought for our federal recognition. I, I survived. Uh, I survived alcoholism, uh, addiction, incarceration, and uh, I found a purpose down here to give back to my people. I, uh, if there was anything that came out of this relocation act was my sobriety and meeting my wife. Yes, it was a hard road, but we made it. So when I found out I got cast in Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon as Rita Smith, I literally couldn't believe it. I screamed again this time, but it was like a scream of pure joy, which was like drastically different from my breakdown earlier. And when um, I was wrapped, with Killers of the Flower Moon, I had also gotten onto uh, Reservation Dogs and Rutherford Falls. It's wonderful, like, you know, feeling that you're seen after so long of not feeling seen. I promise that if you keep going, if you keep, keep trudging forward, if it's genuinely your passion, keep going. You might just get what you want. My tribal leaders didn't wait around for an answer. 
Instead, in the 1970s, they founded their first social service nonprofit. They later went on to develop nation building and other tribal entities. Today, my tribe has economic development. We have social services. We're getting into microfinancing. We have education programs for our youth. We have services for our elders. We're providing housing stability for families and youth development to steer youth away from the juvenile justice system. At the end of the day, federal acknowledgement does not make us a sovereign tribe. We claim our own sovereignty. We have never relinquished it. The Fernandinho Tatavian Band of Mission Indians has been and will be a tribe right here in Los Angeles. In LA County, we pride ourselves on our inclusivity and diversity. However, we have never fairly recognized the indigenous people from right here in LA County or those that have come here from all over North America. And this has been detrimental to them socially and economically. True representation would mean that Angelinos do a better job in acknowledging the land-based tribes who were here historically, here today, and who will be here in the future.